Thank Welcome you. back to one of our uh, great classes that we've got here at Partnership Realty. I'm Ishmael Alvarez, the broker. Uh, so we're glad to have you guys back here. This is a very important class because this class has to do on how do we fill out an as-is contract, okay? So this is a, a, a two-part a two class. This uh, particular one, the first one that we're doing today, and then tomorrow we're going to do another one. This particular one here is going to show you guys how to fill out uh, the actual uh, as-is contract, but then as well as going to show you the basics of it, the steps, how to find it, and so forth. But now once we submit and we're filling out an offer and we submit this offer and the offer becomes a contract, then comes our job that we were licensed by DBPR, the, the Real Estate Commission and Division of Real Estate, okay? We have to protect our clients, whether we represent a buyer or we represent a seller. It doesn't matter which one, okay? So what do you guys need to know? You guys need to know about the contract laws. Listen, your clients just this signed a binding, obligating commitment because a contract is a commitment, okay? They're committed to each other, seller, buyer, by who? By the realtor. The realtor said, sign right there, okay? So you guys, our job as licensed realtors is to protect our clients from the beginning of this transaction to the very end of this transaction, okay? So how important, I'm gonna ask our realtors here, how important do you guys think it is to know contract laws? You gotta know them. How about financing laws if it's a finance contract? You gotta know them. So we're gonna go over all that tomorrow. That's tomorrow's class. We'll be going over inspections. We'll be going over HOAs. We're gonna be over the, the contract laws, the financing laws. We're gonna be going over all the certain little uh, details that we're not doing today. Today we're just gonna fill out the, uh, the actual assets contract and show you how to fill it out, okay? So right now you're in your form simplicity. There's something I wanna show you guys and they're called shortcuts. Uh, so you'll add in more sh shortcuts afterwards but right now, I just want you to guys, for the ones that are starting out, I want you guys to just put in your basic shortcuts. So you're going to come here to your Flex MLS. We're going to open up our Flex MLS. And then you're going to go in your upper left-hand corner. See where it says Menu? Okay, we're going to click there. And we're going to put in shortcuts. I want to start out with our office listings. So you're going to come down here. See how the star is not, it's in white. It's not starred, but it's not, how it's not starred, right? how it's not highlighted. Once you highlight it, watch what happens up there. Here it is, office listings. We just created a shortcut. I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to be taking all these steps. I want to go right to it, and I want to go in there and, and just do whatever, I've, I've, you know, whatever I have to do. So the second one is quick search. How, when we search for properties, that's another, um, another shortcut that you're going to use to find properties, to find, you know, uh, actives, if you're going to look at, if you're doing a CMA, if you're doing, you know, uh, looking at clothes and so forth. So you want to click on that and look what happens up there. It's there, quick search. So we've created two tabs already. Now, the other one is, I want you guys to find, go down, and we're going to find office members. So the office and a member. What if a client calls you guys up and says, you know, I know the realtor who's got it, or the office, or you want to contact that realtor because you might not have their information or their broker's information. So let's click on that. So we've got the office and members. You're going to find realtors through there um, and through there. So the next one that we're going to click on is forms simplicity. Extremely important. So we come under products and there is form simplicity. It, again, it's not starred. You're looking at it. It's clear. But once we click on it, um, oh, we just go right back to menu, go back to products, there we go, and find form simplicity, there we go, and we're going to click on it. It's going to be up there. So we just created shortcuts. You guys need to create these shortcuts, all right? Now, what is form simplicity? Form simplicity is all of our packages, but before I take you to the shortcut, I want to go back to our home page and I want to show you the shortcut to form simplicity because form simplicity has two shortcuts, okay? So if I want to go directly to form simplicity, I don't want to open up here. So no, let, I'm going to go back to our um, open it. See right here? So when you go to your home page right there, if you go down, look, there's form simplicity right there. So when you go down, 
Just click on Foreign Simplicity, and it's going to take you to the very same place that we created the first shortcut. So let's, let's open this up right here. And we're going to go right into Form Simplicity. Now, here's the thing. You guys have the option of using two Form Simplicities. There is a new version and there is an old version. What's the difference? Doesn't new sound like it's better? Not necessarily. Okay? New sounds, uh, n n this is the new version right here. So they're going to start you out with the new version. Me, just personally, you know, I like using the old version. It's got the very same contracts. They're all updated. It's, they're, they're all completely the same. It's just a lot more user friendly. So it's, it's, all it is is just convenience for you guys to use the old version. So if you guys are under the new version and you want to convert back to the old version, well, let me show you where to go. Go right there on your right-hand corner and see, see it, how it says there, switch to the old version and click switch to the old version again. There you go. Now you're at the old version. Contracts are the same. All your forms is just, it's easier to use. So use the, uh, the, user ver uh, the older version. Now every single package is right there created under form packages. Let's open that up. I'm not going to go into this uh, in details today because I've got many other classes that you guys can go to Partnership, Realty, and you can go to e-signing, and you're going to see everything there. Uh, you guys need to visit Partnership Realty, whether you're doing a rental, so it's how to fill out a, 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 a lease, how to fill out a contract to lease, how to become an investor, financial freedom. All the classes are there for you guys to learn how to use all this here. Uh, escrow deposits, you, these are all very important classes that you guys got to take. But here's another thing really important about every single package that is there. Unless you guys open up these packages one by one and get to know what, what's there, you guys are not thorough realtors. To become a realtor is you got to know what you're doing, okay? And to become a realtor, a successful realtor, it takes education like the realtors that we have here, thank you for coming, and the ones that are visiting us and watching us right now live, thank you for watching, okay? You will be a successful realtor, you know, because you're going to learn this, you're going to learn everything there is, and to become a successful realtor, you need to learn every aspect of the real estate world, every corner, every crack, every single thing that there is to be, to learn about real estate, okay? So you guys got to go through this, the seven most important dates, blind ads, uh, broker's license. If you guys are looking for the, my license or the company license, you don't have to call me up. Just go right there, open it up, and you've got it, and you can email it to this. There's classes in all of this here, but you guys have to practice this at home. I'm not going to go through it completely. Even your errors and emissions, your logos, everything you want from the W-9 to uh, making a deposit, you know, right into our account. Everything is there. If you're working with HUD and you need the, uh, our NAID number, you need our federal ID number, uh, it's right there. These are for foreclosed properties, okay? You guys need to do this at home. Uh, today, we're going to work with the buyer's package. Tomorrow, we're going to go up and we're going to work with the seven most important dates in a contract, okay? extremely important. This is what gets every realtor in trouble. It's not understanding these contract laws and these financing laws. This is ex exactly what gets every realtor in trouble, okay? But once you've seen these classes and the great thing about on YouTube, you can watch it 3, 4, 5, 10, 15 times until you know it like the back of your hand. But tomorrow's class, we're going to do that there. So we're going to work with the buyer's package today. We're going to open it up in a minute. But I want to go back into one of the good things about this here is that you can switch right back and forth. We're going to go back into our, um, our, our main page here, and we are going to do a office search. So let's go back. Uh, you can open up a Flex if you want to go up. You've got Flex already open. Perfect. So here where it says, that's the first shortcut that we created. See how it says office listings? Well, what is that? Exactly what it says. Those are all partnership realties listings. 
those listings, we have 467 listings as of today for you guys' marketing strategies. Now, how do you market? How do you use all these listings to, to, towards your advantage? Well, again, go to YouTube, go to Partnership Realty, go do it and look at a marketing class. And I don't, it doesn't matter to me whether you speak Spanish or English because it's both versions are there. So if you want to know about marketing, go to the Spanish class. If you want to know about uh, uh, marketing in English, go to the English class. But it's going to be there. I'm not going to really get into a marketing class today, but I just want to show you how it's all there. Now, right now when you open it, um, when you open it, it's going to be assorted. It's, the, the, it's not going to be from like the most expensive one to the lower one or from the most inexpensive to the lower. So how can you change it? You, you can go here, click on price, and you can either do sort ascending or sort descending. So right now we're going to do sort ascending. And it's going to start you out with the most inexpensive ones. Now, when you guys see like $20 there, you know that's not a, that's, there's no rental for $20 a month. That is a commercial lease. It's $20 per, per, $20 per, uh, uh, per uh, base, uh, base rate, okay, on the, on the square footage. And again, when you want to watch a commercial class, go to Partnership Realty Commercial Class. You get to learn all this. But see here, here's a, a, a it's a, um, Apartment being uh, rented out for 550, another one for 875. So we're going to start out with all the leases first. So if you're doing a rental and you want to find all the rentals, there they are. We're going to start from the lower, to the least expensive, going up. So we're just going to keep uh, scrolling down. 990, 950. We're going to keep going. Uh, 1100, 1200. We're, we're going to keep going because today's not a rental class. Anytime you guys want to do a rental class, how are you going to go? Partnership Realty, contract the lease, Partnership Realty, how to fill a lease. So, and you guys need to do rentals. You guys need to do everything because everything is intertwined. It's, you'll get referrals from a rental, you'll get a sale. From a sale, you'll get a commercial lease. From a commercial lease, you'll get back to a rental. From a rental, you'll get an investor. From a, an investor, you'll get a commercial sale. From a commercial sale, you'll get a foreign national. You guys have to work everything. I hear, real, I hear um, realtors that sometimes they'll come in and they'll say, oh, Ishmael, we don't do rentals. Boy, that is bad information because rentals is quick, fast cash. And because of that rental and that client, they're gonna, you're going to get, you're gonna get a, a sell out of it, someone who's looking to sell their property. And you were their realtor that helped them with their rental. They trust you. So now they're going to give you a listing. And I can go on and on with the stories. But let's go down, and we're going to look for a property. Let's find something in the mid threes, 350. Because from Palm Beach County going that way south, Broward and Dade, there aren't too many properties on the $300,000. We can still go to Port St. Lucie and find properties in the 180s, the 190s, 200000 And let me do mention to you guys, sales are through the roof over there. Investors, so you see what I mean, how important it is to, be, to know about investor classes? And we teach all that through Partnership Realty. Look it up. Uh, you know. So let's find, look, here's one here that we'll use. Uh, this is a good one because it's got an HOA. Good one, Guillermo, for uh, uh, helping out with this here. So let's click on that one and open it. Here it is. We've got it completely open here. This is the, uh, this is the listing that we're going to get, we're going to use from our office as the sample for this class today. Okay. So. Um, information is always at the same place. Let me grab this so I can point. Um, the the uh, MLS number is right there. It either starts with an RX dash or a UX. It just depends if some of them are in, like from Dade County or uh, you know they're overseas. It just depends. RX is pretty much local for our board, you know. But you have to use the entire RX number. You just don't use the number uh, portion of it. You, you need the uh, uh, the letters in front of it as well too. The price is going to be there. Uh, the taxes, another thing with the taxes as well too, the year. If you guys see a 2018, 2017 taxes, that's not going to be a valid tax. Okay, that's not going to be a, a, a updated. You really need 2019. Square footage, right here you've got living and you've got total. Uh, living means under air. Okay, and total means total. It could be the garage, the deck, 
the patio, the pool area, things like that. That's not under air, okay? So another important thing is let's look at the year built because to write up this offer today, if it's built before 1978, what do we need? Lead base, okay? But if it's built after 1978, then we really don't need it. Another very important thing is the HOA. We want to find out what the HOA is per month and go down a little lower. The application fee. We want to find out, you know, what the application fee is going to be required to be approved by this HOA. So if we keep going down, you've got the listing agent's information here. In this case, it's Dominic. So we're going to keep going down. Since there's an HOA, it's really important that we find out what's included in that maintenance fee. So right here, you've got cable, common area, management fees, and so forth. You're going to find out what's included. So that's really important for us to know. But what else is important to know under the HOA? The restrictions. So if we come up here, uh, it's buyer approved. That means that the buyer must be approved by the HOA before they can buy. Okay. Uh, commercial vehicles prohibited. Uh, no lease and no lease for the first year. So if you've got an investor, if you have an investor and they want this property to lease it out, then you know, it's, it might not be the right property for them because this community does not allow leases in the first year. So, you know, um, so there's a lot of great information there. And the good thing about it, the information is always at, at the same place. So once you know where everything's at, the taxes, where, you know, where the uh, square footage is at, the measurements of the H bedroom and so forth, it doesn't change. Everything's going to be at the same place. So now let's go into our form simplicity. So now we have to create a package, okay? So we're going to go back to home right here. And uh, we are going to go to form packages. Why? Because all the forms are there. We have to create a package. So who are we representing today? A buyer. So go to buyer's package. And we already know there's an HOA. So we need, uh, please do not confuse a condo addendum okay, to an, H, to an HOA addendum, okay, it's two separate things. So we're going to find the, uh, we're going to find the as is contract, we're going to click on it, then the next thing you're going to click on is the, uh, the HOA, where is there, uh, you, you can click on that one too, the right to inspect, that's already inside your contract, it's inside your contract, but it wouldn't hurt to repeat it, 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 it won't hurt. So you need the H, if you're doing an FHA loan, you need to click on it. Okay, if you're doing a VA loan, you need to click on that addendum. Uh, yep, hi, how are you doing? Sorry. Uh, tell us a little bit about you, uh, your name, and um, tell us just a little bit about you, you know, uh, you know, how long you've been a realtor and so forth. Uh, my name is Anir Ricardo Villa. I've been a realtor for about a week now. Wow, <laughs> congratulations on that thank license, you, Anir. You. And I'm 19. Yes. I'm, I'm from West Palm Beach. Wow, it's amazing. Here's the great thing about that. You know, starting out at 19, can you imagine when you're at 20 or 30 or 40? Look at a class that I think you're going to enjoy it very much, and it's called Partnership Financial Freedom. Yeah. You don't understand by starting out right now, when you're at 20, 30 years old, or 40 years old, you have no clue what this license is going to do for you and the community, the people that you're going to help. Uh, tell us as well, too, um, why did you choose real estate? I've just always been intrigued with the sales aspect of business, and I really enjoy it. Oh, I do too. Uh, very, very much. V very much. Uh, so, you know, uh, I had you confused today with a, uh, another gentleman from another, and I called him on he had twice. Oh. <laughs> but he had a mask on, oh, okay. so I wasn't sure. His name is Ricardo. I had him confused, and you had your mask off. So, because um, I did get, a, get the pleasure of meeting you the other day. So, you said you had a question? Oh, uh, yeah, like... Would this, would all these steps be after the offer was accepted? No, this is the offer. That's the offer? This is how to fill out an offer. Okay. Right, this is the offer. And a good question. I mean, please, I love all questions. And so does, so does our realtors that are watching, okay? Because they, they're not here, they can't ask the questions, so they appreciate your questions very, very much. Okay, there are no silly questions. You're starting out, you're not supposed to know these things. But guess what? After a month of coming to these classes, you're going to be up here teaching these classes instead of me. Why? Because you know what you're doing, you know. So um, when you go to do a rental, you don't do it on a lease. You do it on what's called a contract to lease. So that's the first stage of 
when you represent a tenant, okay? It's called a contract to lease. So a contract to lease, you gotta, you gotta look it up, you know, partnership realty, contract to lease, okay? And that's how you submit an offer. Once the contract to lease is accepted, then, it, then you write up the lease. So you gotta go to the second stage of it, is partnership realty, how to fill out a lease. But here in this case here today, we use the same as is contract as our offer. Once the offer, it could be countered or they could be accepted. Once it's accepted, then we have an executed, and, and uh, we have an executed, uh, you know, contract. So this is the offer. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So okay. So we've got the HOA addendum. There is uh, there is no lead base, and um, here's something else uh, that I, I would like I would like our realtors to know. If there's a conventional loan, because I get these calls all the time. And they'll ask me, Ishmael, there's an FHA addendum, there's, a, um, there's a, 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 D, a VA addendum, is there a conventional loan? No, there's not. Okay? So now you guys know this, that there isn't one. There's only FHA and VA. Okay? So now we've selected the documents that we need. So what we're going to do now is we have to create a package. Okay? So we're, uh, sorry, we're going to create a transaction. So see up in the right hand, your upper right hand corner, See where it says create? Well, let's click on that. And here's the thing. At this point, you guys can just move uh, over from, you know, from, the, from the listing that you're working on to your, to your form simplicity. So let's go to the listing, and I'm going to copy paste the actual address. So let's copy paste the address. There we go. And copy, and then we're just going to go back into our form simplicity, and we're going to paste it. Now. We want, it, we want the transaction name to be the same, so click, so click there, the same as. But please, and I really ask you guys, do not click on save. You almost think you're done because that word save there, you want to go right to it, do not do that. Because if you click on save, what that, the first little bullet point right there, you see it? It says all the forms that's on file. Boy, if you do that, you're going to click on every single thing there. We don't want that. We only want the selected ones. Now you can click on save. Because we only want the three documents or four documents that we picked out. Four documents. Yeah. So here it is. And I want to show you guys that this is already created. So I'm going to go back up again. I'm going to go back up again. And I'm going to go to the home page of Form Simplicity. And I want to show you guys where it's at. Because... You've got form packages. Well, no, I'm not going to click on that yet. You've got form packages there. You don't go there to find it because this package has been created, correct? So you're going to go to two places. Just like you can either go here to active transactions or you can go up here to active transactions. Click on either one and guess what's going to happen? It's going to take you right to your transaction. You'll never lose this. It's there. You can only do two things with this. One, you can delete it because if it's, uh, you know, it's just a test practice that you guys have to test. The, uh, you, you know, do these at home. Do test trials as many as you can, okay? And then since they're test trials or just examples, go back there and delete it. But if you've got a package that has already been executed and so forth, you can, you can archive it. And we'll show you another class on how archi archiving it. But here's the package. Now, we're going to click on it. We're going to open it up. So now we are ready to start filling out a contract, guys. So here we're going to, uh, no, we're going to come right here, click on, click on, up on the top. I want to select all these forms. I want everything filled out. It, you know, before, years ago, we had to write these and do them all manual by hand. It took two or three hours to write these contracts. For you guys to write these contracts, it should take you guys no more than 10 minutes, truly. There's two things. Uh, well, it could be three things. All right. But I'm going to go with, uh, yeah, let's go with three. There are three things that you guys probably didn't fill this contract out in 10 minutes. One is that you started filling it out, and maybe you went to the kitchen and went and got a cup of tea, a coffee, or something like that, so you were delayed. But it should take you guys no more than 10 minutes to fill this out. Not two hours, not three hours like the old days. This is so easy, so simple. I love it. Okay, because when you are filling out one document, it's just, it's just filling out the entire other documents that is there. 
Okay? So we're going to come here. We're going to fill out this. We're gonna, oh, sorry. I told you guys there were three things. One, you went and got a cup of coffee or a tea. Two, that maybe you had to step out. You can close, save this, close it. You can come back an hour later, five hours later, and it's still there. And the third and last, what, you, what do you guys think this is? That you never practice this. So when you, go to, when you go to fill out a contract, okay, and here's the best thing about filling out contracts nowadays. Do you guys really think that you really need a desktop? You need a laptop or a notepad? No, sir. You need a cell phone. We can fill out contracts from the cell phone while we're sitting right there and I just showed the property to the client because time is of the essence. If you, if you tell them, listen, I'll fill it out tomorrow, someone else has looked at this property two, three days ago or a week ago, has just submitted an offer on it, and your client just lost that deal. It is so easy to fill out from your cell phone. You're right there. So while you're sitting with them right there in the parking lot, you're filling out the contract. And from right there, you're sending it to your client. They're e-signing it. You're getting it back on your cell phone because they're e-signing it from the cell phone, you're getting it back on your cell phone, and from your cell phone, you're submitting it to who? The listing agent. Boy, if this is not, I love living in today's world. The technology that we've got today, it is amazing. It is truly, truly amazing, okay? So again, the third one, what was it? If you guys don't practice this at home, if you don't, then you're right. You're gonna take an hour, two hours, you're gonna be asking other people questions. Don't, just do many test examples. Pick out properties, uh, write in any buyer's name, Check, change the price, send it to me or Guillermo, let us overlook it and see if you guys did something right or wrong or not. You know what I mean? But you need to practice this as much as you can. So you could do what? Be efficient. Get this done within five, 10 minutes. So right now, we've picked out all the forms we want filled out and we're gonna go to content. So here we are at content. And as you can see, the address is right there because we created this tab. So I need to go back to our forms, our, our listing, and we are going to copy paste the complete MLS number. So let's copy that. And let's go back to our form simplicity and see our MLS search right there. And we're going to paste it. And then we're going to hit import the MLS. We're going to import everything that's in the MLS into, into our contracts already, our forms that we've got. Now, here's something that you guys need to understand about this. Sometimes you guys will see the same address with a different MLS number two times in there. Because you've got some sellers that will tell the listing agent, listen, I want you to post this property in the MLS under a rental and I want you to post it under a sale whichever comes first. How do you know the difference between a sale and a rental? Very easy, go to, the, go to the right corner right there. If it's a rental, it's certainly not going for $359,900. So it might be $2,800 or something like that. So I need you guys to select the right one. <laughs> Today we're doing a, uh, 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 making an offer on a purchase. So select that one. And here's the best part about this right there. When you select it, 60% of all of those forms are filled, bless you, are filled out. 60% of all of those forms are completely filled out. I, I love this, okay? Now we just need to finish filling it out a little bit. So right here on the, under the content page, we're gonna continue filling it out. So there's the address, the partial ID, legal description, and so forth. The year it was built, the HOA Association, and they're asking for 359.9, okay? So now we're going to put in here our offer. So our offer, I'm going, to ask, I'm going to ask for full price because I'm going to ask for some seller contribution. Okay, So I'm going to ask for full price there of $359.9. And then see here where it says uh, the, the seller or landlord is withheld. Sometimes it's because either these individuals, the sellers, they either work for law enforcement, the judicial system, you know, the state attorney or something like that. Their information is not supposed to be in there. If you guys see withheld, don't worry about it. Come down here where it says seller, put owner of records. That's the title companies to put a scenario to put it in there. What if it's an estate or if it's a trust? It could be any of these entities, okay? 
So let, on our records, it's, it's going to include everybody, whether it's an estate, whether it's a trust, whether it's a law enforcement officer, whether it's anyone that they don't want their names to show up there. So just put owner of records. That's going to cover it. Title company is going to handle everything that they're supposed to handle, you know, in, in a legal and correct mannerism. So now, uh, here we're going to come down to the brokerage firm's information is going to be there. Since we picked one of our own listings, you know, it's, it's partnership realties listing is going to be there. The broker's name, in this case, it's me. And also, there is the information for the uh, listing agent. But now we're going to go down, and here is the buyer or tenant. So we're going to just uh, use a buyer. So we're going to take advantage today that we have Sarah here. We're going to use uh, Sarah. Put her name, Sarah Kane. There she is. I guess we've used her in the past before. So if Sarah, you know, is married or she has a couple, she has a partner, we're going to put, you know, uh, the partner's name. The other person is going to be on, the, on this contract uh, down as well, too. So now you're going to keep going down. And it's going to have your information, uh, who your broker is. And in this case, whoever opens up the MLS report, when you open up your MLS report, it's your information here. Since we're using it through Guillermo Martinez, uh, his information is there. But look at all that you guys have to do now. Just click on Save. We're taking a lot longer on this because I'm trying to go over detail and step per step. But I'm telling you guys, this is a 10-minute thing to fill out a as his contract. So now, you know, we're going to come back and I want you to select up on the top because when I go to fill out this contract, I want everything filled out. I want the remainder of these forms. Now what happens, do something, unclick that again and just click the as is contract. All right, if we do this, the only thing that we're filling out is the as is contract. This is not going to populate down here. So we want it just to roll in here and fill everything out. So that's what are you going to do? You're going to come up there and select that. And now let's open up the as-is contract. We're ready to fill this out. We're, we're probably, like I said, we're way over halfway. Did you guys like that? Way over halfway. I like that too. All right. So look at this. Owner of records. We've got the buyer. Of course, guys, this is nothing more than an example. This is not real, okay? We're not going to end up, Sarah's not going to end up buying a house or anything like that. So this is, this is again, just an example for today's class purposes, okay? So what I'm going to show you guys here, and if you guys look at these numbers, and, this, and a good thing about, you can call myself or Guillermo, uh, you know, or our transaction coordinators, any of us to assist you with, anything that starred, do you think that, you know, Division of Real, uh, Real Estate Commission, uh, Division of Real Estate thinks it's important? Absolutely. If it's starred, it's because it should be filled out, okay? So, like I said, most of the stuff is completely filled out already, but we're going to come down to, you know, just the, you know, the, the basic stuffs today. Uh, there are other classes that you can watch that are more in detailed to it that we'll go over in a minute, but I, we're going to do this just going to basics. 20, I really need you guys to go and fill out 20. One thing that realtors forget to put in there all the time is washer and dryer. If there's a washer and dryer in there, or if your buyer wants that washer and dryer, because it's not in the MLS report, but your buyer wants it, okay? Let's put washer and dryer. What if there's chandeliers? What if there's patio furniture? Anything that you want included in there, goes here. Now look at what happens. Let's say that there is a very nice washer and dryer, stainless steel, modern, high efficiency. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. And you know, the buyers truly, truly love that. By you not putting this in here, what you're telling the listing agent and the seller is, uh, my buyer really doesn't need that. They have their own very nice stainless steel, high efficiency, modern washer and dryers, okay? So a lot of sellers will think, well, they truly don't need it because they didn't ask for it, okay? So if you didn't ask for it, they, they really don't have to give it to you, even though it says it in the MLS report. But guess what? You didn't ask for it because they don't know the difference whether they need it or not. So do, do me a, a huge favor and do pull, put it in there. And if you guys can, when you do the inspection, they're going to take photos of that washer and dryer. You'll take photos with your cell phone of the washer and dryer, of the appliances and everything like that, okay, of, of anything that you want included in there. Because you don't want them switching it out on you either, okay? 
even the appraisal. So you've got photos that you took, you've got photos in, that's in the MLS report, you've got the, uh, you got the inspection, you've got the appraisal, you know, and so forth. Um, right now, we're going to go into 27. Let's say we're going to put $1,000 into escrow. You're going to put $1,000 in there. Now, you don't have to put $1,000 into there yet because all we're doing is submitting an offer. We don't know. We don't know if this seller is going to accept our offer or not. So we're going to come here to 29, and we're going to click this box, and we're going to put there three days. We have to have that escrow deposit in that attorney's escrow or that title company's escrow within three days. You realtors, within one day, you guys need to get it over here. Okay, but we truly need to get there within three days. Now, we don't need any title information in there yet, title company or attorney's information, because we really don't know if they're going to accept our offer, first of all. And second of all, we truly don't know who they are. So what are you going to put there? TBA, to be announced. So let's put TBA in there. Now, here's another class that you guys have to, and not only the word have to, must, okay, escrow laws. Escrow deposits. Come into Partnership Realty's YouTube and look at and look at you know escrow deposits because you guys have to follow you know the escrow laws. You guys have to come back and fill all this out. But we're not going to go into it today because you can go into Partnership Realty's escrow laws and escrow classes and you'll learn what to do once that they have accepted your offer. Okay. So for right now, since we're making an offer, TBA is fine because it says what to be announced. So let's come back here. If we're doing an FHA loan and FHA is 3.5% down, so we have to do the math. At $359,900, you have a calculator? Sorry. Um, let's find out what 3.5% is. Okay? So 3.5% 3 of 359.9 comes out to, give you guys, we need a, we need a, sorry. Go ahead. 1,550 50 cents. Okay. What I was going to say is that we need our own band in here with drum roll at that moment. <laughs> okay. And the 3.5% comes out too. All right. Here's the thing, guys. No lender, whether it's FHA, convention, or anyone, finances 50 cents. They don't finance $3, $7, or anything $20. You guys, if you're going to fill out a contract, it makes a huge difference. When you fill out a contract, and sorry, when you're filling out an offer, it makes a huge difference when you submit in an offer thoroughly filled out, properly filled out. What does that give you? Well, it makes you look like a professional. So the listing agent that's looking at your offer goes, oh my God, I, I, don't, I can't tell you how many compliments I've gotten from realtors of ours that have come in and have actually said, you know, Ishmael, what some listing agent just told me, they have not seen a very thoroughly filled out contract as this. They were very pleased. That makes you guys look like professionals. That makes you guys look like, so here, I'm gonna give you guys an example. I'm gonna get three offers in, okay? Well, let's not knock on three. Let's just knock on two, all right? I've got one offer submitted in. It's partially filled out. It's halfway filled out. It's really, there's barely filled out. The other one is thoroughly professionally filled out. Who do you think that that seller or that listing agent is going to feel comfort most comfortable with? With the one that's thoroughly filled out, because I feel that, that that buyer's agent knows what they're doing. They know what they're doing. So I feel more confident, and when I go to talk to my, to my seller, you know, and if my seller is a, is a contractor, an investor, someone who sold one or two or three homes, they're going to feel that more comfortable, you know, with a thoroughly filled out. So here's the thing. At $12,596.50, I want you guys to round it off. Round that off to $12,600, okay? And we're going to come here, right here at number, um, sorry, before we do that, I apologize. We have to take the $359,900, and I apologize, guys, I scribble. <laughs> you know, my penmanship days are gone. I, I think I left my penmanship back at second grade or something like that. So I truly scribble. So good luck, guys, you know, understanding what I'm writing here. But you'll see it there very well written, okay? So take out $12,600 for 
from 359.9, and that's going to give us what? Oh, you don't even, we don't even do, need to do the math at this point. Just, just come here. Yeah, just right there, 347.3. Because it's going to automatically fill it in. It's going to automatically fill it in. So now we filled this out. So if our buyer has already given $1,000 in escrow, okay, at the time of closing, remember the down payment on 3 dollars was 12 6 correct? So truly what they got to bring is 11 6 They've already given 1000 so they need to bring in the difference of 11 6 This is a part here that confuses a lot of people, okay? And our realtors need to know that buying a house does not consist of down payment only. Uh, buying a house consists of actually five items. And I'm going to show you guys in a couple minutes. Okay, so here's the total. Okay, down payment money. And we said that was 3.5%. And that was at twelve thousand six hundred dollars. Okay, so there's also that's a six, by the way. Whoever's looking at that, it's a six. So second is closing costs. There are closing costs, just like a seller has closing costs. A buyer has their own closing costs as well. Okay, and closing costs, FHA conventional will allow up to six percent, but truly. Right now, our banks are giving us phenomenal rates, phenomenal turns, and on a property of $350,000, you do not need to use 6%. I think if you use 3%, you're fine. So we need to figure out what 3% is of $359,900, and that's going to come out to... Uh, so it comes out here. I'm going to write it over here first. It comes out to 10007 97. Again, what do I like to do with these sevens and things like that? Round them off. So let's do this. Instead of 10,797, let's just round that off to 108. Okay? Let's round that off to 108. Now, what else does a buyer, what other out of pocket expenses does a buyer have? Well, they have homeowner's insurance. Got to insure that property. So, we don't sell insurance, but we need to have ideas. And how do we find ideas of what insurances are going for? Ask our coworkers that just did a closing. Find out, hey, what was the insurance, where's the property at? What was the insurance on it? The more that you guys, more questions that you guys ask, the more you know. So we're going to give a good estimate. And if we give an estimate, I prefer to give a higher estimate than a lower estimate because no one likes, you know, bad surprises. People love surprises if you tell them, listen, you're going to come to the closing table with $15,000, and at the time of closing, they truly only had to bring in $13,000. That is a nice surprise. But if you told them they've got to come in with $15,000, and at the time of closing, they've got to bring in seventeen dollars or $18,000, that's not such a nice surprise. Okay? So I prefer to calculate high and then come in lower. So let's use, on a $359,000, let's use $2,800 for homeowner's insurance, okay? The next one is an appraisal. So we don't know what an appraisal is going to come out to, but an average appraisal cost that you want to work with, 525. You know, that's a good number to work with. If it comes at 475, all the better. 450, all the better. The next one is we have homeowner's inspection. So we've got the inspection, we've got the four point, we've got the wind mitigation as well too. They might as well do everything all at one time there. So that's roughly about $300. Okay? So we've got all of our numbers here that we need to be able to fill out this contract and give a true, you know, good estimate of, to our buyer, okay, of how much money they're going to need to bring to the closing table at the day of closing. Because what if they tell you, well, I don't have that much? That's not a good surprise. Okay? So we need to know how much money they've got with they have to work with, and then that's what we're going to work with. Okay, I want to go back into um, our form simplicity. Yeah. 
because this is a document, this is a form that I want you guys to use. If you don't know this, like off the top of your head, I've got it here that you guys can actually use this and just, it's, just fill in the blanks. So go back to form packages. You know, and, well, I'm going to show you guys where it's at. And then I want you to go to buyer's package because we represent who today? A buyer. And I want you to go down and yeah, keep going down and stop there. See this, see this blue bar? Okay. Everything above that blue bar comes from Foreign Simplicity's library. What does that mean? <laughs> you know? All right. That means that the system knows exactly where every initial goes, where every signature and every date goes. Anything below any of our forms that you see below the blue bar, these are documents that I've added in there, okay? Documents that we need. So there is, you know, from an appraisal substitute to, you know, home inspection waiver, because there are some people that will tell you, you know, by the way, I don't want to do a home inspection, okay? You've got the waiver, lead-based pamphlet. You guys are filling, you're, you're having people for, for lead-based, any homes below 1978, you are filling, people are filling out forms that are saying that they received the lead-based pamphlet. And you didn't give them anything. Well, you should. It's really simple. Just click on lead-based pamphlet right there. Look how easy. No, here, lead-based right up here. Oh, sorry, I'm in your way. <laughs> sorry, right there. No, cl no, click on the box. On the box. Select the box. Watch this. Go up. I'm, I'm doing an e-signing class. Not, you know... You can see all this in some in other our other classes of e-signing. You've selected the document, come right there, select command, and go to email. And now watch this. Email it to your client. How easy is that? Write their email there on subject you want to put down. Let's use Guillermo, for example. Uh, we'll use your own email email. There we go. It's going to always save any emails that you use. And you're going to put there, you know, lead-based pamphlet. But see how his information's there already? I can, we can even teach you guys right after the class. We'll teach you guys how to have your address already imprinted in there. So we're not going to hit send because if we do that, you know, all you got to do is click send on that. So let's close out of that one. Just click outside. Oh, no, it should go down. It should have cancel right there. All right, so let's continue going down, and let's go back to, you can unclick that. And I want you guys to go to pre-qualification form. Now, I'm only going to go into this into a short detail today, because today we're filling out an as-is contract, but you guys need to know how to pre-qualify a client. How do you know that? Well, watch our next episode that we're going to do it. Or just go back. We've done these episodes already. But every time that I do these episodes, it's different. Because I can't teach you guys how to become loan officers. Not that I want you to become a loan officer, but you truly need to know what the heck you're doing. Okay? You've got to know what you're doing. You, because you're responsible for intelligent answers to your clients, to the listing agent, to the seller, and so forth. Okay? So um, we're not going to do the whole thing there, but you guys can go to Partnership Realty, uh, how to pre-qualify a client, and you're going you're gonna to learn how to thoroughly fill this out. But we'll do one of these classes again really, really soon. So here is the sales price. We did it in our other class. All the, all, everything's plugged in already. So you're going to plug in 359.9 there. We already know that the down payment is 3.5%, so it's 12.6. But I told you guys at the beginning that I'm going to offer full price. Why? because I want to ask the seller to cover some of my buyer's closing costs. So I'm going to cover here under seller paid closing, and we're going to type in there $8,000, okay? Then the buyer is going to bring the difference, because the difference was how much? Uh, $10,800, okay? So if the seller is paying for eight, that means that the buyer needs to bring to the closing table $2,800, now, homeowner's insurance. What did I say that was going to be? $2,800. We already plugged it in. Appraisal. I already said it's going to be $525. It's already plugged in. So under HOA, here's a good thing. When you guys go to practices at, at home, 
You guys can actually delete this and you can put homeowner's insurance. Or you could put HOA fee there, either or. Or put HOA slash homeowner's insurance and include them all together. Because there's $150 for the uh, HOA application and the inspection should be roughly about $300. So we're going to put that in there and once you add all this up, the client's going to have to bring in $19,000, okay, roughly, oh boy, do I scribble, $19,025, okay, to the, uh, to the closing table. Now, we're asking for the seller to give us $8,000. So you guys need to fill this out first because this right here is what's going to go into the as-is contract. Uh, without knowing this, boy, you're, you're really, you're out in left field somewhere. You're totally out in left field, okay? Your client doesn't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. And this, as this contract, will not be thoroughly filled out. So we've got all the numbers there. So let's go back to our as is contract and finish filling it out. So uh, you go back to the as is contract, and we're going to go down. So everything's filled out. Now remember this here. This is just the down payment. So now we're going to come here to the next one, line 45, and that is time of acceptance. I think three days is more than enough to give a seller, you know, the option whether they want to accept my client's offer or not. So if today, uh, you know, we're going to give them three days. Today's the, uh, I, today's the 8th. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to click on the 11th right there, July 11th. Now remember, it's three business days too, including holidays and so forth. Now the closing date, we're going to make it 30 days out of the 11th, of July 11th. So we're going to go August 11th. Now make sure that that date does not land on a Saturday or Sunday. So if it does land on a Saturday or Sunday, do the, do the Friday before or the actual you know, Monday after. So let's keep going down, and we're going to go to all the important items here first. Number 78 here, extremely important here. You're going to click, see it starred? You're going to go there and put down may not assign. What if they send you guys an offer and you're an enlisting agent and that, that may not assign is left open? Make sure you click it in there. We don't want an investor coming in and playing with our sellers, you know, with our sellers the, uh, listing or with your listing. So may not assign is that they cannot assign that contract. It's whoever's on, whoever's on, on the contract is going to have to complete uh, you know, and, and purchase this property. So now, if it's a cash deal, you're going to click on 82, but this is not a cash deal. It's an FHA financing. So you want to put here, this is an FHA, this contract is contingent upon our buyer getting a loan commitment, okay, getting a loan commitment um, for this, uh, for this, and it's an FHA, it's an FHA, so you want to click on FHA. What if it was conventional? Click on conventional, you know, but it's not a conventional loan, it's an FHA loan. So if we have a 30-day closing, we need a loan commitment within 20 days. So we need a loan approval, a loan commitment, or we need what's called a CTC. Those are the most beautiful words in any realtor's ears. Why? Because a CTC is a clear to close. That means we're ready to close. How exciting is that? So. Here, remember, the loan closing date cannot be the same day as the loan commitment. Impossible, you know, So, because, I mean, it, for many reasons. First of all, once you get the CDC, it's going to go into quality control. Quality control, this is the lender we're talking about here. It's going to review another set of eyes. It's going to overlook what the underwriter did, okay, and make sure that everything is fine. And then once it passes quality control, it's going to go to the title, I'm sorry, it's going to go to the closing department of the lender, okay? And now the, the closing department of the lender, it's not like they've got just your file there. They might have 50, 30, 60, 70, 80 files ahead of yours. So now they have to prepare this. This could take them two to three days, correct? To prepare the closing documents and send it to who? The title company. Then we've got the trig law. What is the trig law? 72 to hours, three days. Okay, that the buyer really needs in order to review the documents. So it's impossible that you get a CTC and the closing date's the very same day. So we need at least a loan commitment or a CTC by the 20th. 
The next thing you want to fill out, look at this, is starred. It's got to be a reason. Fixed. Don't leave it open. You know, it just makes you look very professional when you thoroughly fill out a contract. The next one is, on 89, you can put in their current, because it's really not, it's not, it's not up to us. It's got nothing to do with us. What the client has, you know, discussed with their financial institution, okay? So you can put in their current, or you can take out, take that out, and you can put in their market, M-K-T, just the abbreviations, you know, for market. Either or, current, market, that's between the buyer and their financial institution. The next one you want to fill out is, it's a 30-year loan. But if they're doing a 15 or 20, you'll see that in the pre-approval letter, and you'll know, and you'll put in whatever the term is. Not truly important, but you know what? Um, fill it in. It's, 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 uh, it just makes you, again, you have a thoroughly filled out contract. So 91, 91 is really important. Do not leave it open, because you know what that's saying right there? That, let's say that we're switching everything around, guys. Today we represent who? Right now, as of right now, we're representing a seller. And if we're the listing agent and an offer comes in like this open or with the five in there, just go ahead and put, put a five in there, Guillermo, for me. For Just uh, put a five in there for me. Okay? We're the listing agent. What this is saying is that a, a buyer wants us to take the property off the market and they have five days to find out if they can be approved or not. Are you serious? Do you want to go to your list to your seller and say listen I've got you know I've got a really good offer right here and um, you know five days later and you guys overlook this portion right there five days later four days later you get uh, a denial that they're not going to be approved now you have to go back to your seller and you have to tell your seller, oh by the way you know that property that we put an offer on well we can't go through it because that buyer didn't get approved so one thing that I recommend for you guys to do as a buyer's agent is put in there, done. Just put done in there. Our client already went to the lender. They took their tax returns in. They took their pay stubs. They took their bank statements. They took every single document that was required, and they have been approved. So put there, done. It's been completed and done already. So that makes a listing agent, that makes a contractor, a seller, an investor feel very, very, very comfortable with this uh, offer that we're submitting. Uh, the next thing here, I'm going over a lot of things here that I'm not going to go into, because if not, we'd be, we'll be here for hours. You guys at home, you can't do what I'm doing. You th really need to know every single page, every paragraph, because it's easy. Look at this, a cost to be paid by the buyer. Everything is categorized, uh, you know, and you need to know what it is. And every contract's the same. Because if you go to a buyer and the buyer says to you, oh, by the way, what does this page say? And you were to tell them, uh, yeah, it's just no normal, you know, mumbo jumbo, don't worry about it. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. You need to tell them what it is. You know, make yourself, you are a, listen, you guys are licensed by DBPR. You are professionals. Every single realtor is a professional, okay? You need to know what these are. So at home, go through this. Once you've read this one or once or twice, you'll never need to read it again unless there's some changes to our contracts, but you'll never need to read them again. But imagine stumbling into one or two clients that says to you, by the way, we're on page five. What is that paragraph? You go, well, let's read it together. I would be so fearful. Not fearful, that's sorry, wrong word, guys. But I don't know, I just lose a little bit of confidence in you, you know. But imagine if you were to tell them, uh, which one, page five, which paragraph? This is, you know, just tell them what it is. How do you do this? you got to go at home, you have to read this at home, okay? So let's go down. Uh, so let, right here under other, at 144, we can put this in two different places, okay? What if there's a processing fee or a transaction fee? You can put in there, write it right in here, buyer to pay, you know, partnership realty, uh, $495 processing fee. Buyer to pay, $495 to partnership realty. So you can put it in there.
but probably it's not going to fit at all, but PRI, Partnership Realty, thinks. So the next one here at 145 is the, uh, the actual title. Put something in there. Uh, buyer has the right to review this preliminary, preliminary po title policy, and so does the lender. So at least put in there 15 days. That's fine for 15 days, whatever it says there, 10, 15, we're okay with that. So now the next one you want to go to is 158. Now, this is not a law. This is nothing more but a, just a rule of thumb, a practice, okay? In Palm Beach County, Martin County, Stewart, St. Lucie County, seller picks title, but it's not a law. It's not edged in stone, okay? Now, Broward and Dade, buyer picks title. But again, what if we're representing someone here under, you know, the tri-counties here in Palm Beach County, and our buyer wants to pay for title. Then you just choose right there, buyer shall designate and pay for title. But, you know, again, just as a normal practice, um, usually always, you know, Palm Beach County, Stewart, Martin, St. Lucie County, you know, seller picks. So today we're using a property here in Palm Beach County. So what we're going to do, put seller, seller designate. So we're going to come down. And all the ones that I'm showing you guys here, these are the ones that you guys truly have to fill out. So we're going to come down here. See here it says in Miami, uh, again, Broward and Dade buyer picks. So every home, unless it's a brand new construction, is sold as is. There's no warranty, okay? But it's sold as is to the buyer with the right of inspection. Buyers have the right to do an inspection and then choose whether they want to buy, whether they want to counter, you know, or so forth. But just put in there in A. The next one here, if we represent a buyer, we want to choose 185 where it says seller shall pay the assessments all prior up to closing. But here's something about this, that sometimes listing agents will, will counter this and they'll click in 183. That's fine because we're going to talk to the title company and we're going to find out we're going to find out if there are any assessments, any liens, if there's anything that we should know about, okay? And we're going to do all this. How we're going to do it? You're not going to do it. You can you can actually do it by calling, but you're going to also follow up with an email or a text. Good morning, good afternoon, you know, title company, Mrs. Title, Mr. Title, you know, um, and you're going to find out are there any special assessments, because I see you changed this, that we should know about. Are there any liens or things like that? So really don't worry about that if they counter on this one here. But you guys have to follow up with an email or a text. Leave it in what? Leave it in writing. So we're going to continue going down. We're almost completely done with this contract, this offer, sorry. I hope it turns into a contract so we can sell, sell Sarah a property. Um, okay, right here. The next one here is... Uh, inspection period. These inspection companies, the ones that we work with, if once we order an inspection, it's, they're there the very next day. The, the longest is within two days. Understand something. Putting 10 days in there or 15 days, it's got to be that your, your buyer truly wants to be there and they need time off from their job. But to see the seller, the seller doesn't have to accept a 10 or 15 days, because what does that mean to a seller? That means that the property is going to be taken off the market for 10 days, 15 days, to find out if the buyer wants to purchase this property or not. Now, does the buyer have to do an inspection? No, they don't. They can go by the, you know, the neighborhood and find out, well, this is really, I've done my due diligence. I don't like this property. So they can cancel this property. So imagine, cancel this offer or this contract. Imagine if you were the listing agent, you guys were the listing agent, and your sellers are extremely happy, okay? Extremely happy because they're going to they're gonna make an offer on another property because they don't want to miss out on that property, okay? And to find out, you know, 14 days later, 12 days later, that the buyer doesn't want to buy, and they've already put a deposit on another property. So I love to put here seven days because truly, if that inspection company says to me, well, we really need 10 days. I go, are you guys overworked? Do, do you have too much work? Then there are tons of inspection companies out there. I need to go, I need, I need 
and especially the company to go out there and get this done within three to four days, way before the seventh day. Why? Because we're not taking the listing agent's property off the market, and we're not taking the seller's property off the market. We're actually, you know, we're moving this right along as quickly as possible, okay? So the next one here that we're going to go down to, now all these things, we're, we're, these pages that we're just uh, going through, guys, you really do really need to read these at home and get familiar with every single paragraph, every single page that, that's here. But I'm just going to show you guys the most important ones for right now for this class, and, um, and we're going to keep going. We're almost done here, guys. Here we go. Very important. Page number 11. Okay. Um, right here, there was an association, so we need an, an HOA writer, and there's also an FHA writer, and there is no lead base. So click on those two items, and then you can come here and click on other. If there's an addendum, there's anything other, you know, like in, in, in this case here, we had an inspection. Now remember, it was already in there, we're just repeating it. But you really don't have to do it. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. So, um, because it's, it's already embedded into the as-is contract. But if you want to repeat things, I, I kind of like repeating things sometimes because you can't tell me, you know, that you didn't hear it or didn't see it. Oh my God, I sent it to you twice. But anyway, so here, now, this is very important here. Remember, we need, we need $8,000 of seller contribution. What are you going to write here? Seller to pay $8,000 of buyer's closing costs. So this is where you write it in. Seller to pay $8,000 of buyer's closing costs. Now remember, the seller does not have to accept that. They can accept it. They can counter it. You can renegotiate it again. If you guys need help, remember, not only myself, our office managers, myself, the office managers, we're available to you guys seven days a week. You guys can send me that counter. We'll look at it. We'll, uh, you know, I'll tell you guys what to do uh, so you can run it by your buyer, and you can send them another counter again, you know, and just negotiate it. Um, very important right here. We're truly done uh, on this here. One last thing that I want to mention to you guys. If the MLS report says... It's paying here. Let me clear this real quick. If the MLS report says it's paying 2.5%, guys, don't go here. Remember, you represent the buyer. Put uh, under parentheses, just put 3% down there. So don't go there and put 3%. Because whatever it says in that MLS report, that's the commission that you guys are going to get paid. Okay, uh, MLS report is like a binding contract uh, nowadays, but it's not etched in stone. You can change that. How can you change that? Here, and I'll give you an example. Because I've done this, uh, our office has done it, and I've done it many a times. If they're asking, and I'm just going to use round numbers for my scribble sake, okay? If they're asking $360,000 for this property, and my buyer just absolutely has to have this property. They love this property. And they offer $40,000 more for a total of $400,000. You know what? I think this broker, okay, or the, you, the realtor, I think you you've, might earn an additional 5%. So, again, you can't put it there. You have to, you have to draw up an addendum, okay, and it has to state that all parties are aware of this, buyer, seller, and all parties must sign this that is stating that the commission that is going to be paid to the buyer's agent is going to be three, a half a percent more. Instead of 2%, 3%. Who has to sign this? Sellers or seller. Buyers, bu buyer. The two realtors and the two brokers. Now, it, you can actually change this. You can actually change this right here. But truly, if the MLS report read 2% or 2.5%, that's exactly what goes there. So put 2.5% put back because that's what's in the MLS report. You know? But I'm actually giving that seller $40,000 more 
We've had occasions in, that we've given over 100000 We've given $175,000 more, $50,000 more. Yeah, I, I really think that, um, you know, I really truly think that I, I've earned my additional half a percent more, okay? But that's maybe an occasion here. Now, we have truly filled out an as-is contract already, the most important steps. But here is the second most important step. Now that your client, so you submit the offer, so this offer gets accepted and it becomes a contract, now comes truly the job of a realtor. Because filling this in, I have so many realtors that come and go, I'm going to write a contract. Uh, no, you're not. Contracts are already written out. You're going to fill in a contract, okay? But what is truly the job of a realtor, of us? We're here to protect the clients from the beginning of this transaction to the very end of this transaction and make this the most pleasant experience that they could probably, you know, uh, experience, okay? So now, in order to make this contract the most ex pleasant experience, we have to know step number two, which is the second part of this class, which is the contract dates, the contract laws, the financing laws, Boy, boy, do, is that important, okay? Because the member of the public depends on who? The professionals to assist them. Us realtors, we are truly professionals, okay? I want to thank you guys for being here again with us. I'll see you guys tomorrow at the second part of this class, which is, I probably will tell you, it's probably more important than this part here. They're both equally important, but you need to know them both. Thanks again. I'm Ishmael Alvarez with Partnership Realty. I'll see you at tomorrow's class.